Welcome back, y'all. Welcome back. Yo, look, as we said, the February month is coming up. That is, if you're listening at the moment, that is today, tomorrow. Uh, if you're listening to later, you're probably already in it by this point. It's all good. Works the same. But what comes with it is a new matrix season for a lot of teams. The spring matrix season, winter, if you're down south like me, under the equator, um, is starting to kick in. And the college rugby season is getting up really, really high. But of course, you, this is also the time when the high school students need to start really prepping in for their college career next year. And I want to bring in our special guest, an expert when it comes to college readiness, when it comes to rugby and using rugby to be able to get into college. She is the founder of the Ruggers Edge. She is a longtime college prep and of course, a college a rugby player as well. I want to introduce you to Karen Fong Donoghue, homie for the show for a long time. Karen, thank you so much for coming on to the show. <laughs> Hi, I don't know if uh, you can see me right now, can you? Yes, we can, yes okay. we can. All right, wonderful, yay, this is so cool. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, I I'm excited to have you on. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time to be on today. Uh, look, you know, this is one of those situations where you know, for a long time, it's been at least the over 10 years that I've known you. And I know you've been doing it even before that. Um, watching how college rugby has just evolved over these last 10 years and been able to see such a, an impact uh, for so many kids in this day and age. But I think there's still so much confusion that is happening when it comes to getting people prepped and ready for college. Um, so... You know, kind of just starting off that, um, you know, from where you've seen it from just a, 10 years ago to, to now, what has been one of the, one, some of the real key changes that have uh, you've seen evolve as, as college rugby has changed? Yeah, uh, it's it's amazing to me that um, so much has changed, you know, honestly, in a very small amount of time. Um, so, I mean, I, I think, you know, when I first started the Ruggers Edge, um, there were some questions about whether or not I could ever, you know, have a company that was really focused on college rugby, you know, because, um, you know, there's been plenty of college counselors out there working with traditional sports like football and baseball and those sorts of things. But rugby at that time um, really was not on anyone's, um, you know, horizon. So, I mean, the, a, a couple things I think have really changed uh, the game. It's such a big pun, but <laughs> um, obviously on the women's side, really the growth of the NCAA programs. So that I think adds a lot of legitimacy to, to rugby in general, but especially on the women's side. So when I first started the Ruggers Edge, I would say the vast majority of clients coming to me um, were male players. Um, and now, honestly, I have probably more female athletes and families coming to me than the other side. And a lot of that is because they've realized that, oh, well, there are legitimate programs out there where, you know, there are scholarship opportunities or there's admission opportunities at some pretty big name schools. Um, and now rugby is really like on par with you know, soccer or volleyball or, you know, kind of those those long traditional recruiting sports. So definitely on the women's side, seeing the NCAA growth, that has been huge, 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 huge. So I think we'll talk a lot more about that. Um, and then second, the other side is obviously on the men's side, even though not NCAA, there is still a growth of the varsity, in, you know, you know, supported programs as well as kind of those hybrid programs at least club programs that are getting a lot more support from their institutions so just overall i mean i think the level of rugby you know is growing and so it's less the oh you want to go play good rugby and here's five schools now there's a really big list that i can put together from you know for students right there's 25 30 programs you get to choose from instead of oh here's the three to four that we all kind of know about so that's been great too just to see the variety grow my god I, I did not realize that the expansion had been so heavy though i am not surprised in the women's side because of what had been going on with uh uh, uh the the ncaa uh, side of it, and I feel like there's been a lot of investment that goes uh, to the women's side as well. Um, mm -hmm. You know, 
even though there are more opportunities, I think there is clearly still a lot of confusion that goes along with uh, getting people ready to uh, apply and be able to find and be eligible uh, to play and even, if possible, receive scholarships. So if you were a college senior or a college senior, I'm sorry, a high school senior or a high school junior at this point, uh, if you could, maybe more junior so because you know, give yeah. them a couple of years. Yeah. Um, what would you say is uh, would be a place where people need to start if they want to be able to play college rugby at a high level in college and uh, yeah. to be able to get uh, opportunity to to be able to play uh, paid, if you may? Yeah. Yeah. Um, OK, so a couple things. So number one, uh, with all students, um, I, and this is a little bit of, of toot my own horn, but one of the first things that I will tell a lot of students to do um, is to go ahead on, on my website. If you go to ruggersedge.com under what we do, you're going to see online content. Um, I do have a webinar, a, rug, a college rugby 101. Um, it's really worth it for most families to watch that. It gives you the, you know, the the overlay and the the landscape of what college rugby looks like. What is scholarship? What is recruitment? So that you understand what the the realistic opportunities are out there before you go down and start sending, you know, emails and trying to put together highlight films and sort, you know, things that may or may not really play a role. Right. So the vast majority of programs out there still are club. So if there's a junior out there and their college list currently are schools that are club programs. So, um, you know, here in Colorado, let's say it's CU Boulder and then you've got, you know, I don't know, um, you know, University of Denver and then, I don't know, Louisiana State. Right. I mean, you're Louisiana. Guy. Oh, you. um, so <laughs> you've got these club programs. Do you really need to start reaching out to coaches and sending them, you know, uh, you know, like recommendation letters or film? Like, not really, right? Like, if you want to touch base with a coach at a club program, that's for the student. Um, so, I mean, I think to understand how you're going to spend your time and, and whether or not it's worth it for you, that's a really good starting point. So, if you go to my website, that's the first thing I would do is watch that College Rugby 101 to kind of no kind of ground level. This is what college rugby is. This is what it isn't. Okay. Once you have that basis going on, let's say you do, you know, follow my recommendations in there, which is to start thinking about what college list you have, right? So what we just talked about is once you start figuring out, um, you know, th this is the location I would like, this is the major I'm thinking about, this is the size of school. Now you start putting together that list of, of programs. Honestly, at, at a certain point, I tell students to separate out the rugby from the, the point of going to college, the academic part, right? Rugby is a is a piece of the puzzle, but it's rarely the reason you're getting into college. So even the programs that are varsity and can help with admission, they don't carry the kind of swag that um, like a, a D1 um you know bowl contender football program would right they're not going to be able to get a a player in who academically is not viable for that school so if you are a rugby player and you are looking at you know dartmouth women's rugby the best thing you're going to do is make sure you're set up academically to get into that school before you even start approaching all the recruitment stuff of filling out recruit forms talking to coaches and things like that so like the number one thing is really, honestly, like do the work in the classroom because that's going to be more important than what's happening out on the pitch. Um, so, I mean, that's the, the very, very first step. Like I tell a lot of students that uh, if we think about the college process, it's a little bit like building a house. OK, okay. Um, we cannot do anything unless the foundation is solid and the foundation of this house we're building is your grades the classes you're taking, and potentially test scores. So those are the academic pieces that that's going to be the first thing we look at before we get to, are you a great kicker at fly half? Right. Are you a really strong hooker? Do you throw really well? I mean, like most programs, before we even get to that stuff, they need to know, will you be successful in college? You know, it doesn't do any of these programs any good to recruit a player who cannot academically make it for the first semester, the first year, you know, any of that, right? So like, 
no program is, is in a position where they want to waste their money, their recruitment spots on players that cannot survive and be successful within that college program. Does that kind of make sense? That makes perfect sense. And it, it, it goes into what would actually be my next question is what is it that these kids also need to know that have changed now in 2024 when it comes to academic prep? I know since I was in high school 20 <laughs> odd years ago, you know, we had 1600 SAT and uh, 23 to 36 ACT. Yep, yep. That seems to have gone out the window. I think we're at 3200 SAT last I heard. And I don't know even if the ACT is yeah. even considered anymore, <laughs> you know, so, you know, for for what they need to prepare for in their academics outside of obviously trying to get their grades up at a high level. Mm -hmm. What are the additional outside forces that they need to be able to make sure those schools know that they are capable of yeah. being able to perform yeah. in uh, college? Yeah, great question. So it's so funny. It went from 1600 to 2400, it went back down to 1600. So just so you know, you're, you're not wrong. Um, so, I mean, one of the things that I stress all the time with students, um, uh, when it comes to testing, um, because I mentioned it before, it, it is a piece of the puzzle. Um, it may or may not be mandatory. And the reason I say this is, okay, a couple things. If you're gonna do testing, ACT or SAT, every single college, if they're gonna take it, they'll take either or, so you don't need to take both. Um, if you do well on it, it can help. If you don't do well on it, you could potentially apply to colleges that are still test optional or they're test blind. So for example, University of California schools, UCLA, UC Berkeley, UC Davis, those are all test blind schools, meaning they don't look at testing at all. So it doesn't matter for them. But let's say you have a list with those schools, plus you're adding um, University of Utah, which will look at a test. If you have a good test score, it will help you. So, I mean, the main thing that's different, I think, is the understanding that if you don't have the high enough score where, you know, years ago it might, it might be something of, oh, you didn't get the score, you really shouldn't even apply. You're never, you know, you didn't, you didn't have kind of the goods there. Now you could apply without the score. You could go optional. Um, however, the, I would say one of the changes that happened this year, because a lot of the test optional stuff happened because of the pandemic, which feels like so long ago, but it actually wasn't. It was only a couple years ago. Wow. Um, many schools are reverting back to test required. So one thing I would make sure, especially if you're a junior, again, the reason for really starting to nail down what colleges you're aiming for is then knowing Am I applying to MIT this year? If you are, your test scores are gonna be required. Are you applying to Georgetown? Test scores are going to be required. Oh, I'm only applying to UC schools. I don't need to worry about testing at all because they don't take them. So right. I think that helps you again, kind of figure out what do I really need to work on? You know, Cause I think some families, the reason they're overwhelmed is they hear this one rumor over here at a dinner party. They hear this from another parent at a rugby game, right? And it's like, hang on, let's wait a minute. What colleges are you aiming for? What do I need to do for these colleges? Instead of getting too discombobulated about, oh, I, I, I need to do this, I need to do that. And it's like, it, it really depends on your schools, you know, what you need to do. The only other big thing that I'll mention for families to be aware of, starting this year, um, this spring actually in March, um, the SAT is going to a digital format. So ACT is staying with paper, okay. um, the way we took it, right? You know, like you bubble in all your answers. Right. Uh, Many SAT, have broken pencils. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, um, the SAT is now switching to a computer format. Um, so some students are really going to have to make the shift just mentally of how do you take a test on a, on a computer and the way that there it's, there's a little bit of artificial intelligence included in that test. Um, there is also a webinar, by the way, on my website. Uh, I, I co-hosted something with um, a test prep company that explained the way the new testing is going to work, which is essentially once you start missing questions, your test track is going to change. So if, if you basically, you know how like if, if me and you were going to take the old SAT, we all right. get the same test booklet and we're kind of answering the things. What's going to happen on the digital side is, let's say you and I are taking, uh, we're on the computer. You answer the first one correct. I answer it wrong. 
your next question will continue to get tougher. Mine might continue to get easier. Like there's going to be um, basically a ceiling of how, how high I can get um, because of how I start answering questions. The computer will start to um, adjust its questions. Um, it, it's a whole, it, it's a weird, I'm not sure how it's going to turn out. I think everyone's trying to figure out how to prep for it. It's going to be yeah. slightly different, right? Understanding how to use the, the digital um, uh, calculator, like how to answer. Yeah, things like that. So that's going to be one of the changes we'll see. I just read something the other day. ACT is playing around with a digital ACT. We'll see if that comes around. So, I mean, these aren't like deal breakers, but I think, again, especially if you're a junior, or younger, these are just things to be aware of, right? Like these are maybe coming down the pike from, from an academic standpoint. Right. You know, it, it, it sounds like they're trying to really raise the floor for the kids uh, as opposed to uh, dr drop the ceiling. But I, I find that such an interesting uh, kind of re-strategizing on how you have to go look at how you take tests. Because I know for me, you know, my mind would be like, okay, Look, how do I get like somewhere within 12 to 1300? I don't want to get the hardest questions. I don't really want to work that hard, but I want to get like, you know, a solid middle ground, you know, so I can pass. Yeah. Enough people will like me, but, you know, we might not go <laughs> overboard, but it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I will say, in an interesting turn, I think, um, kind of like with everything, right? I think with technology, it is also trickling over into the recruitment side too. You know, I, I think when I meet with students now, uh, I often get a lot of questions about whether they should make their own website, whether they should make their own kind of rugby Instagram profile, if they should um, reach out to coaches more on social media versus through email, um, things like that. So I think the obviously the the youth, right, the the, the young people out there, th that's where they're most comfortable. Right. Um, and then obviously using things like Next Phase Rugby, which I think has been a really good addition um, to just the overall recruitment, you know, puzzle, you know, I think, you know, everyone was like, I, I think I had people wondering why I would tell people about next phase. And I said, look, we're completely different companies and they're complimentary, you yeah. know? So I, I think it's so funny when people are like, Oh, and then there's all these other companies. Like, are you upset about it? And I'm like, no, like we're, I'm a very specific type of college counselor um yeah. and, and and i have gotten to the point where i understand i may not be for everyone and that's a good thing you know just like colleges right like drury is not the same as lindenwood and lindenwood's not the same as central washington or university of oregon and every single student is different too and like being okay with that like when i talk to college programs and they tell me like, how are we going to recruit? You know, we're not varsity or we're not this or that. I'm like, you don't have to be, you know, like there are students who don't want a varsity experience. They literally say to me, you know, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being like the most serious, the most competitive program out there, what kind of program do you want? And they'll say, you know, like a five, I want to play. I want to have fun. I'm not going to be a professional player. I'm not making a national team. Right. I want to play good rugby, make friends, have it be a part of my college life. That's awesome. Like there are college programs that are like that and they should kind of double down on that and then yeah. talk about it. Like, Hey, we're a fun team. We go play good rugby. We have a great time. We have friends for life. That's awesome. There's tons and tons of players that are looking for that. They're not all looking for the, West Point Naval Academy experience. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. No, and, and, and yeah. it, it makes perfect sense. It makes sense. Uh, again, like you said, not everybody's trying to go like, let me go pro in life. It's like, let me just be able to have a guiding, almost like a fraternity sorority. Let me just get my group of people. I got my network. I get to have some fun playing. And then, hey, I'm going to get yeah. my degree at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think a lot of that is what makes rugby such a cool community right like it, it's not just about the players that have made it you know like pro or national team it's like players that continue to play club into their 40s and 50s you know i right. mean that's those are the people you want to stick around and stay with the community and go to the games and cheer on the eagles like that kind of thing right so like we want every team you know, yes, we want to lift up the professionalism. I think that's a good thing to aim for. But I think to not lose sight of the fact that, like, 
it's a fun game. You know, it's a, it's a fun community and that's a good thing. So yeah. that, that, that's my little soapbox. So. <laughs> Yo, I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, you know, as I said, never to, you can never be able to uh, get enough of the rugby as long as you're able to catch the culture the way that you need it to be. And I think as long as you're hitting that, you're able to, you know, succeed and, and grow within the sport uh, yeah. as on and off the field, respectively. Yeah. Oh, I was going to mention one quick thing. You, one of your first questions was kind of one of the big uh, changes. Um, I will mention one of the things I've really noticed um, is the influx of international players coming here to play rugby. Okay. So originally, I think I got a lot of interest from players um, hoping to come here because they're thinking, oh, varsity rugby, scholarships, right? Money, like they're thinking um, varsity football, right? They're, they're thinking that D1 football kind of experience. Right. Once people started figuring out that within rugby, while there is scholarship money, it is rarely that full ride experience. Right. There's still a lot of uh international players that have a lot of rugby experience but do want to come here for that classic college experience that you don't get at international colleges so i do think that's been interesting to see a lot more players like i i see a lot of players from canada um from um, the asian countries so like hong kong philippines guam um, Singapore. So you have a lot of expat community there. So you have a lot of families that are looking now to come right. back and rugby ends up being a piece of it. So I think that'll be interesting to see how these teams develop with not only domestically grown high school players, but really international, um, right. you know, players coming back here and kind of continuing to grow the game. So that that'll be a fun kind of development, I think, in the next like five, 10 years. I think that's going to be an interesting because of the fact, especially because of kind of this renaissance back of, I, I assume a lot of universities are going to be trying to push to get more internationals if the American domestic side is dwindling, maybe even a little bit in, in uh, admissions, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a little bit from before. So to, to know that's at least an opportunity to uh, still get the experience of the American, rug, uh, American collegiate life. <laughs> uh, I think it's definitely one, yeah. uh, one of a kind, right? <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Karen, I want to thank you so much uh, for the information. Thank you for so much for telling us. I, I know you've mentioned it a couple times, but where can people find you uh, to be able to get advice or to be able to use your services? Yeah, absolutely. So ruggersedge.com um, is my website. So just how it sounds, R-U-G-G-E-R-S. E-D-G-E, I hope I spelled that right, <laughs> dot com. Um, you'll see a, a button there that says work with us. You can fill that out and just, uh, I always offer a free 30 minute consultation so they can do that with me. I can find out more about their family, you know, see what questions they have, see if we're a good fit. Um, lots of resources that are on my website as well, including summer camps, high school tournaments, um, as I said, some online content, lots of informational webinars. And then um, just on Facebook, I have a Facebook page there as well that I post regular updates and things like that. But I would love to connect with families. I'd love to connect with teams. Um, I do lots of, uh, you know, like webinars for teams and things like that to help them uh, get a group going on what, what needs to be done. So, I mean, overall, the, the number one message I tell every single high school player, family, team, if, if someone out there wants to play college rugby, they absolutely can. 100%. There is no doubt in my mind, you know, Joey might play at a different program than Sammy, but they're going to get a play. If they want to play, we can find a place for them. So that's part of the, the kind of amazing part about rugby. So if I can help continue to help people continue to play, I'd love it. So that's part of my, my mission here. And I'm so happy to be a part of it. And thanks so much for having me on. It's always so fun to see you. And oh. you haven't you haven't aged a day <laughs> since we met 10 years ago. So I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, the feeling is absolutely mutual, Karen. The feeling, look, you know, this is this is what happened when we're in this rugby, rugby loving industry. You know, when we're having fun, it, it helps. It helps. It's yeah. craziness. It goes a whole lot of different directions, but it's joy to our hearts when we see it all come together. And I think that's what keeps us going these days, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you'll have to send me this so I can share this out too, that I can make sure that people know where to find you and and this show. How cool! A absolutely. Absolutely. Karen, thank you so much. Thank We're going to talk again very, very soon. Yes.
No worries. Guys, we'll be right back uh, after this. Uh, we got uh, more stories happening in, in rugby. Uh, MICR is killing it out here. Uh, this is Gift Time, Gift Time, Gift Time, a Belu with Rugby Swag. Till next time. Cheers. Hey, I just said, I can't. I said, I can't.